Leon is one of the strongest Pokemon trainers that we have ever seen. From his debut from Pokemon Sword and Shield to being the number one in the World Coronation series, we have seen him accomplish a bit. We've seen these accomplishments and his team in action. That begs the question though, how strong is Leon really? Today, we are going to be uncovering just that by taking his game presence and anime presence and analyzing his teams and wins against certain individuals. So that said, let's hop right to it. In the games, Leon started out at the age of 10, just as any Pokemon trainer does. He entered the Galar Gym Challenge after receiving his endorsement from Chairman Rose, and went on to win his first ever Gym Challenge run without losing a single battle, becoming the undisputed winner of the Galar Champion Cup. He clearly has aged a ton by the time we were introduced to him in the games, and over the years, he managed to continue to win every single battle that he took part in. Whether it be a league or exhibition match, he is considered to be a hero, so much that he has been given the title of the unbeatable champion and the greatest trainer in Galar by citizens of the region. In the beginning of the game, Leon is shown to be fighting against Raihan's Duraludon. And while the fight isn't shown on screen, we know that Leon wins the fight to retain his title as the undefeated champion. After that, Leon travels to Wedgehurst to meet up with Hop and the player. Once they arrive back to Hop in Leon's house, it is where Leon reveals that he brought over a gift for the two, the Galar starter Pokemon, Grookey, Scorbunny, and Sobble. Whichever Pokemon the player chooses, Hop chooses the Pokemon weak against it, and Leon takes the remaining Pokemon. This is where you can pretty much decide how strong Leon is in your respective playthrough. Leon has three somewhat different teams depending on which starter you choose at the beginning of the game. Four of his Pokemon are the same, those being his Aegislash, Dragapult, Haxorus, and of course his flagship Gigantamax Charizard. That being said, there are two slots on his team that change, but those two make a big difference. I'll talk about them from worst to best. Starting off, we have his team if you chose Grookey. This is by far his worst team, because the two slots are Seismitoad and the Cinderace that neither you or Hop chose. The big issue with these two is that, for one, it has two fire types on it. Now, I know he already has two dragon types, but we'll get into why those two sharing a type is fine in a little bit. This Cinderace doesn't really do much that the Charizard can't. Its moveset is Pyroball, Acrobatics, Faint, and Quick Attack, while Charizard's is Fire Blast, Air Slash, Solar Beam, and Ancient Power. As you can see, Charizard already has a Fire and Flying move, so Cinderace just doesn't add anything unique to the team, and basically gives Leon two blaring weaknesses to Fire types. Then there's Seismitoad. Now the slot that this Pokemon holds is basically meant to be weak to your starter on every team, but here it is so bad. Seismitoad has a 4 times weakness to grass types, so if you send in your Rillaboom against this thing, it's over. You'll most likely outspeed it as well, so it's basically a free win. Next up is the team that you would fight if you had chosen Scorbunny at the beginning of the game. This team is just alright. The two Pokemon that fill the slots are Mr. Rhyme and then obviously the Inteleon that neither you or Hop chose. Now, to be honest, Inteleon isn't as big of an issue as Cinderace was. In fact, it does add a nice little bit of coverage that Leon's team doesn't already have. Snipeshot would help against potential rock types and ground types, but against fire types, that coverage isn't really needed because Haxorus already knows Earthquake. Also, rock types are covered by Aegislash's Sacred Sword, so Inteleon, again, isn't that necessary. It's always good to have options, though. Mr. Rhyme, on the other hand, doesn't do much for the team. It's in that free spot where it's either going to get one shot by your starter either way, but not only that, it adds another hole in Leon's team because Aegislash also takes a lot of damage from fire types. Not only that, but if you have a Ghost or Dark type, you could have a favorable fight against three of his Pokemon, since half of his team is weak to those types, Dragapult, Aegislash, and Mr. Rhyme. With moves like Teeter Dance, Psychic, Freeze Dry, and Thunderbolt though, it could do some work given the chance, but it's most likely not going to get that chance. That brings us to his team if you chose Sobble, and honestly, this is a really solid team. You're probably going to have a bigger challenge against Leon if you choose Sobble. The two Pokemon on his team for this one are Rhyperior and the Rillaboom that neither you or Hop chose. Now, I know what you're saying. Rhyperior is four times weak to water types. And yeah, that's completely true. But if you look closely, this Rhyperior has the Solid Rock ability, which means super effective move damage is reduced by 25%. 
so there is a slim chance that whatever water move your Inteleon uses on it won't make it faint. And that chance is much more than Seismitoad and Mr. Rhyme has. Now, we have Rillaboom, who is a great fit for Leon's team. Not only does it cover a weakness to water Pokemon, but it can also cover electric types, and surprisingly fire types as well. This is because, in addition to straight up resisting electric moves, it has high horsepower as a move, meaning it can get super effective damage on electric and fire types. Add that with your knockoff, endeavor, and drum beating for its moves, and you have a star Pokemon on your lineup. As for the remaining members of his team, Aegislash is the Pokemon he tends to always lead with, and it's a great one. This Pokemon used to be in freaking Ubers in the competitive scene, so you know how strong it is. Not only that, but it doesn't have any priority moves, which may sound like a bad thing, but this means that if it goes last in any given turn, it can always have its defense boost from being in the shield form. It uses an attack that instantly uses King Shield the next turn so that it'll be in shield form anytime it's attacked. Pretty good combination, I'd say. It's got Sacred Sword, as I mentioned earlier, to combat its weakness in Dark types as well, and Shadow Ball for its weakness against Ghost types. Speaking of Ghost types, though, Dragapult is another great addition to this team. It's got the moves Shadow Ball, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, and Dragon Breath. Other than Dragon Breath, which is a pretty odd move for it to have, this is a pretty solid move set. Flamethrower to cover against Ice types. Thunderbolt to combat against water types who may be carrying ice moves, and Shadow Ball to take out the ghost types. If it happens to run into any fairy types, luckily the other dragon Pokemon on Leon's team is here. Haxorus knows Outrage, Earthquake, Iron Tail, and Poison Jab. Outrage is already a powerful move that can wipe through a big part of any team if timed right. Earthquake will be good to stop those rogue, fire, and electric types, and Iron Tail and Poison Jab are the perfect counter to the inevitable fairy types that it may have to face. Rhyperior, while I did praise it for the Solid Rock ability, is still the weakest link of the team. If it does manage to survive that Water-type move, it could do massive damage, with either Earthquake, Stone Edge, Mega Horn, or Heat Crash, but it probably won't be doing much after that. Finally, we have Charizard, who is the final Pokémon and Ace of Leon. He instantly will Gigantamax it, and he has a Grass-type move to combat Water-types and Rock-types. And if he manages to hit a G-Max Wildfire attack, that will set up Sunny Day, meaning that if he reverts back to his normal form, there is nothing stopping him from hitting a one-turn Solar Beam. Also, be careful that he doesn't get the stat boosts from the Ancient Power attack. Air Slash is also good for coverage. This definitely isn't your normal Charizard, and that is shown more so in the Pokémon anime. Now, Leon's anime incarnation has only shown off two different Pokémon, one of those being Dragapult, who I don't really have much to say about, and the other obviously being his Charizard. Leon is shown to be a very forward-thinking trainer, as he has swapped out moves on Charizard between battles depending on which opponent he is facing. For example, in Leon's first on-screen battle against Lance, he used moves like Thunder Punch, presumably taught to counter Lance's Gyarados. In his battle against Raihan, Ash and Go actually noticed that Leon was using new moves like Brick Brick and Dragon Claw. During the Darkest Day arc, Leon was revealed to have taught his Charizard Rock Tomb. Also in the anime, Leon is pretty much the same, but instead of just being the undefeated champion of Galar, he is also the undefeated monarch of the World Coronation series. I think that shows that he might as well be stronger than his game counterpart, since he was able to climb the ranks and become the world's strongest trainer. In Twilight Wings, Leon is pretty much the same as he is in the games. So now that we know about his team and his character in both the anime and games, as well as his Pokémon, we must answer the question, how strong was Leon actually? Seeing as how Leon managed to climb the ranks of the Galar Gym Challenge, becoming Champion of Galar, and then going on to climb the classes of the World Coronation series, we know that Leon must have defeated numerous strong trainers along the way. We've seen him defeat Lance, the Champion of Kanto, as well as Raihan, who is not as strong, but pretty close to Leon in terms of battle prowess. We've also seen him take down Gigantamax Pokémon, a G-Max Persecure in the games, and a few in the anime, including a G-Max Scorch. He has access to a lot of Pokémon, Pokemon, but his team is very well-rounded if you choose Sobble, but nothing to scoff at if you choose another starter either. His weaknesses to any type are covered by other Pokemon on his team, and each of his Pokemon has a unique and diverse moveset that could help him out of any scenario. Plus, he is an ever-evolving trainer. If he notices a certain moveset either isn't working or needs to be adapted for the next opponent, he trains and teaches them new moves to fit. 
Based on the fact that he is the number one trainer in the World Coronation Series, it might be possible that he had to defeat all of the other champions if they took part, meaning that Leon very well could be the strongest champion of them all. Well, that wraps up my analysis on how strong I think Leon is. Leon is definitely one of the strongest trainers in the Pokemon universe, and I think we are going to see more hidden talent from him as Pokemon Journeys goes on. Let me know what you think of Leon though in the comments below, and also let me know what trainer you would like to see me cover next. Hey, welcome to my new outro. A big thank you to everyone for watching the video. I want to give a huge thanks to my phenomenal team, and for the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all this without them. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, it really helps us out. I have a brand new TikTok for Mystic Umbreon, and I've got a goal to get 10k followers over there. If we can hit that goal, I'm going to pick a random video suggested to me by you guys and do it. So go over there and leave a follow. Also over on Mystic Sage, we've still got two videos going up every weekend. We've got content from My Hero, to Demon Slayer, to Dragon Ball, so come and check it out. And also check out Mystic Sage on TikTok. Finally, I've got an Amazon store where I sell tons of cool stuff. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon, and I'll see you next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.